Industry Insider is only available at Promo Corner, the leader in digital marketing for the promotional products industry. Each Monday, they discuss, dissect, and debate a single issue impacting the world of promotional marketing from every industry perspective. Now, it's time for Promo Corner's Industry Insider. Welcome to another edition of the Industry Insider, your promotional products podcast where you can get all the nerdy news you need to know about. My name is Jeff Franklin, the National Accounts Manager with Headwear USA, and I'm joined today by three other lovely folks. But before we get to them, I've got to tell you this awesome broadcast you're about to listen to uh, is brought to you by our good friends over at Tervis. They've been around since 1946, and they're celebrating 75 years in business. They started with their classic line. They've got sleek styles that make perfect for the active and on-the-go lifestyle. Tervis is the original double wall insulated drinkware that keeps your cold drinks cold and reduces that condensation. Backed by a made-for-life guarantee, Tervis is the original customizable double wall insulated drinkware that keeps hot drinks hot and cold drinks cold. Available in several sizes, including a 16-ounce mug, a 16-ounce or 24-ounce tumbler, and a 24-ounce water bottle as well. Made from Triton plastic, made in America, lifetime warranty, dishwasher, and microwave safe, and BPA-free. So go check them out at TervisPromos.com and uh, tell them we sent you. How about that? Amanda, how did I do? Is that, is that better? I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> All right. Why don't we say hi to, uh, to our friend, Stephen McFadden. That's a What's nice up? shirt you're wearing, Stephen. Hey, I appreciate it. It's really you good. Well. Thanks. Looks great. Thanks. You guys are so uniformed. I love it. I, I love it. I know. Yeah. You, you would think there'd be more than two of us with this shirt, but uh, why, don't we go so to, why don't we go to that other person, Meg Gerber? How are you? I've been wearing it every day and it kind of needed a wash. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what it was, I'm sure. <laughs> that needed a good washing. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, we're joined today by a very special guest, Amanda Delaney, super happy to have you on with High Caliber Line. And uh, we've, got a, we've got an important topic that's sort of all-encompassing. Look, Stephen and I are wearing these shirts talking about the great work that Promo Cares is doing uh, to benefit NAMI of Wake, uh, Wake County. And uh, we're here to talk today with Amanda about mental health illness. And, and it, this week is actually, uh, what did you say it was, Meg? A National Suicide? Suicide Prevention Week. That. Yes. So it's all sort of coming in you know, full circle. So really excited about it but amanda before we do that it is customary for us to give our special guests a good three to four minutes to introduce yourself what you've been up to uh maybe how you got started in the industry is always a really cool thing to hear uh from folks so uh take it away i'm so excited to be here you guys thanks for having me yeah um yeah i have been in the industry for over 19 years i started as a distributor kind of fell into the industry i think like the rest of us did uh, that was back in Seattle, where I'm from. I went to Sanmar from there, from the inside to the outside, kicked me to Raleigh, North Carolina. And then um, I've been with a couple a couple hard goods suppliers ever since. And so I've been with High Caliber Line now for about three months. So still, still kind of fresh, but the story of uh, what I was doing the last year and a half while all of you guys were figuring out how to keep this industry moving ahead is out there and had been talked about, but I took a little sabbatical from the industry. I did some other things to really kind of stay involved with the industry, but just really wanted to be intentional about, you know, the, the supplier that I, I went to next and high caliber line. I, I bought from them when I was a distributor. I'm a West coast girl, even though I'm in Florida living on the East coast now. And I just, I, I love what they're doing. I thought their brand was really underrepresented here and I love a, a good challenge like that. So their objection was always at ship time. You know, we have one factory in California and if I was going to take Florida, that's obviously a longer ship. And after the pandemic, I said, we have plenty more things to worry about than shipping time. So uh, it just, it, it worked out. And my role is constantly evolving, which is really exciting, but um, it's been great so far. And I'm excited, excited to see what we can do in 2022. Sure. Congratulations yeah. on the new job, by the way. That's exciting. Yeah. That's so exciting. You yeah. seem very happy. Great yeah, people awesome. there. We're doing some pretty cool things. So awesome. our values lined up. That's one thing I was really Really wanted to make sure, uh, you know, not all suppliers are the same, but they have a lot of the same values as far as giving back and really focusing on some eco-friendly product, sustainable product. And the owner's not afraid to spend money and bring inventory in. He's not afraid to go talk to, you know, distributors, customers um, with you guys, of course, and see what's out there in the marketplace. So it's a very empowering uh, company, which is, which is really nice. So. Sure. Yeah, I remember when I, uh, when I started in the industry, uh, high caliber line uh, as a distributor, my high caliber line was sort of our go-to for a lot of the uh, hard goods in the industry. So uh, very familiar with high caliber and uh, good peeps. And hey, we were on the East Coast, so it's not impossible, Amanda. Nope. 
sales. Same. When I was, when I started in this industry, I was a distributor and I used high caliber line as well. Was we had like a, we were a web distributor. So our customers were all over the country. Okay. So we were trying to source something on the West coast. We always went to them. So and that's how it is now. Customers are all over a lot of e-commerce business and whatnot, yeah. which is exciting. But I keep hearing that from people. They're like, we used to use high caliber and then we just never think of them because we don't have a rep out here. So it's been really cool to hear the response from, from people. Yeah. So, <laughs> Steven, I'm hitting you up soon. Don't you worry. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> awesome. Well, like I said, the, uh, the topic today is mental health awareness. And, you know, we want to talk about, you know, even, even PK's involvement, what they're doing. Um, so why don't you, uh, why don't you launch into, you know, the topic first of all, and sort of how, you know, sort of the direction that you want to go and anything that we need to be aware of. Yeah. So first of all, it's been really cool to see everybody pulling together and really having these conversations about mental health. I remember saying not too long ago, I don't know what we're going to do when this conversation becomes normalized. And all of a sudden it feels like it's suddenly becoming normalized. So we keep talking about it. That's, that's all I know to do as, as of right now. But um, uh, Dan Nevins actually is what kind of got Promo Kitchen started in it. And I know he's a friend of your guys's as well. And Meg, you've talked about how he inspired the sleep in for good. And um, he's a good friend of mine. And we were just having a conversation one night about, I'd really love to bring this topic into the industry. You know, I'm a sous chef at Promo Kitchen and very, very invested. My heart and soul is invested into that organization. And uh, over the past year and a half, um, Promo Kitchen really kind of saved my life. You know, they uh, just what it's about, the people. It's its just very, very close to my heart uh, now than it even was before. And so Dan's like, I'll speak about mental health. And I had heard his, I had heard his story at LDW a few years before. I heard him on the Industry Insider. And I was like, your story is your story. It's what makes you so great. It's what makes, you know, your recovery so profound. But I want to address this straight as like, hey, we are Promo Kitchen and Dan Evans is joining us to talk about mental health. Like I wanted those, those words connected in print because I hadn't seen that anywhere before. And Dan being the great guy he is, said, I'll do it pro bono. And I was like, we're going to raise money. So I took it to, you know, the chefs and other sous chefs at Promo Kitchen. And they're like, yeah, we're on board. There's some red tape to kind of cut through. And then me, Meg, I'm just like you. I remember you talking about the sleeping for good. You're like, yeah, we're going to do this next month. And I'm like, we're going to raise $10,000 for the Wounded Warrior Project, guys. And they're like, whoa, we're just coming out of a pandemic. People don't have that kind of money to spend. And I'm like, we're going to charge this much for you know, and that's not what Promo Kitchen is about. You know, we, we don't solicit sponsorships or donations. We, we get them from our amazing supporters over the years. And it's not about so-and-so donated X amount of dollars. You know, it's, uh, they have the same values that we do. We just want to lift the industry up. And it's because of those amazing donors that we don't solicit that we're able to offer kind of this high caliber, <laughs> no pun intended, uh, <laughs> education at no cost. And so, they kind of brought me back down to earth, which they have to do often. And I remember reading that, well, I wrote the press release to send a PBAI. And then I remember it going out saying Promo Kitchen opens the door for mental health to become a discussion in the promotional products industry. And uh, Dan did this webinar and it was great. It was powerful. We got a lot of really, really positive responses, you know, from that. Dan and I both sent hand written thank you cards to everybody who donated uh, to the Wounded uh, Warrior Project. And it was just a really cool thing to be a part of. And I remember calling Dan right after we we hung up, just crying. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then a week later, I'm like, wait, what did we just do? <laughs> because then it just kind of stops, right? And so um, just kind of continuing those conversations and then sleeping for good with Promo Cares and very passionate about what you guys do and want to support you any way I can. And seeing that happening and all of a sudden now, it's just every which way, you know, Promo Kitchen, we're putting together resources that we're going to host on our um, new website, stay tuned for that later, uh, that you'll be able to go to and, you know, um, just attaching the promo kitchen name to mental health awareness, to things that I'm very, very passionate about is so it gives me goosebumps. It's so exciting and seeing everybody else just really embrace it and keep that momentum moving. has just been, it's, it's been a really powerful thing to see. You can see that you're passionate about it. And I think that's what drives you is your passion. And you really put your whole heart and soul into stuff and, and, it, and you can tell. And, you know, I, I, I feel like you were really a pioneer for this, it's like coming out with your story and, and being brave enough, like to be able to do that. And like, you know, what? like I'm ripping off all the stigma. I don't care what people think about me. This is my story. This is my truth. And you, you went and did that. And that's, so brave. And I'm sure that what I'm about to tell you isn't a surprise, but once we started this event, 
and we started talking about it, the sleep and forget event, people started, they didn't have a voice before, but now they were like, all right, now I feel like I'm a little bit safer to talk about it. Did you have a big outpouring of, of support from people from our industry? Did people reach out to you and tell you their story because they felt safe with you? Is that, did that happen? Yeah, it has actually. And that's what's, you know, kept me wanting to do it. I started talking about it about four years ago. Uh, Mark Graham and Danny Rosen had me on a promo kitchen podcast and I'm not going to repeat the story. The story's out there for people to hear. I don't necessarily love to bring it up anymore, but while ago, um, you know, I, I, I battled a little run in with addiction and I lost my mom. My world fell apart. My marriage fell apart. I fell apart. I lost my job. And um, I, I chose to handle that grief with substances. And so I went to rehab, got the help that I needed. And I went on a promo kitchen podcast about it. Now, fast forward a few years later, I said at that time, if one person is affected by this, then it's worth it. Right. Well, fast forward later, that's not addiction is not my story. And so now I'm having to tell people that are really stuck with me, watch me go through this whole thing. Hey, I do drink sometimes. I, you know, that was a really difficult thing. But there are five, and I will never name names, but five people in our industry that have since reached out to me saying, I heard your podcast, somebody in my family or a loved one is struggling, do you know how to help? Three of those people I have helped get into rehab, two of those people I know are still sober today. One of them just hit one year sober after trying for a couple of years, it's hard. Uh, and I got a card in the mail from the family. So that's what made me want to do it again. Yeah, it's it gives me goosebumps too. And 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 I I just put their hand in somebody else's, right? I just happened to go through this crap. And so I I, I know people. I live in Florida, it's the rehab capital of the country. There's a lot of bad that goes along with that too. And again, addiction isn't my story, but addiction and mental health are tied very, very closely together. And a lot of people do not either they don't know that, they don't agree with that, they haven't educated themselves enough. My story, I needed help beyond the the alcohol and the, you know, whatnot. So I spent four months in some really intense psychotherapy and I don't want to say that I was cured. Um, that's one thing I'm learning right now. Um, mental health is something that's constantly evolving, right? Like I just, after the past year and a half of everything I've gone through, I have a whole new set of things that I need to focus on. I need a new therapist for that. My last one took me as far as she can, you know? So I'm, I'm working on that, but it has been the support of people the, the voices of people who have supported me and saying, thank you so much for telling your story. The messages that I've received, I was just on a podcast talking about my story with Roger Burnett. And three days ago, I got another message, a long message from somebody I don't know, but they're in this industry and just like sharing their story. And that keeps happening. And so that makes me, because I've, I've, there's been some negative components to it too, right? You put your story out there. It's definitely affected where I landed as a supplier. It's definitely affected, you know, there's, there's a stigma attached to it. But like I said, the support from, you know, good people in the industry, you guys, Danny Rosen has always been a big, big cheerleader of mine, loud and proud, Roger, I, I, I could go on. Um, everybody at Promo Kitchen, the voices of those who are supporting me saying keep going is so much louder than the haters, I guess, you know? And so that's what makes me want to continue talking about it. And the more people that keep coming to me or like, I'll talk to you and somebody will open up about it. It just makes me want to keep doing it. So how can we help you create some more awareness? I mean, can we talk about it a little bit on this podcast as far yeah. as what some of those stigmas are and what are some of the indicators of maybe some, some mental health uh, issues or how do you combat it? That sort of thing. I mean, how, how can we, how can we help folks that are maybe out there dealing with something that, you know, could be very small or could be, you know, much larger. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for that. Um, I'm not a therapist, obviously. Uh, I'm a work in progress, a very large work in progress. Um, educate yourself. I refer people to NAMI's website, NAMI.org all the time. And I have a ton of different channels you can go through as well. You can find your local NAMI chapter and all of the research and education and just events I've been a part of. That is the most credible resource. You know, you see a lot of people, especially, you know, this week is suicide prevention, um, awareness week. And so you're going to see a lot of people posting on Facebook, call this number, call this number. Those suicide numbers are not always the numbers to call. Those 800 number helplines, unless this is attached to NAMI or somebody that you have yourself credited and vetted out, there's a lot of those 800 numbers that are, you know, just thrown up there. And hey, I'm all about people promoting it, you know, getting it out there. But do your homework before you do so. There's a lot of those 800 numbers that if you, and I've seen these stories happen firsthand, and I've, I've been somebody who's called those numbers before. 
where if you don't have a problem as substantial as you are suicidal, they shut you down. If you don't have insurance, they shut you down. So just be careful of what you're putting out there when you're trying to raise awareness. If you're going to post something on social media, my biggest piece of advice is if, if it comes from NAMI, you're, you're, you're good, but just make sure that you're educated in, in what you're putting out there. You know, um, warning signs, just the, there's so many of them, you know, it's, yeah. it's easy to say like, I'm sad or I don't feel blue or my friend's been kind of down to the dumps saying that somebody's in a funk is not the same thing as depression, you know, um, just, just educate yourself. I think that's the best thing people can do is if you don't know about a certain subject or you don't know, or you think suicide is selfish, that's a very, very valid thing to have. I have lost a lot of, a lot of people in my life to suicide. And that's a very valid thought to have, but educate yourself, go to NAMI.org, type in the search box, warning signs, look at, look at the things that are going on kind of behind the scenes, you know, um, anytime you hear somebody say, oh, she's gone crazy. She's off her rocker. Stop those don't conversations. Allow yeah. Don't allow you know, it. just, yeah. Anytime you're talking about somebody who's really going through it, or she's a hot mess, or she's out there partying all the time, or he's doing, you know, da, 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 just in your friends groups, just pick up on those little buzzwords and start asking questions. Well, why is he partying all the time? Why is he, why is he canceling plans all the time? You know, um, why is she being flaky so much? Why can't she get this email to me that she's been promising me all day? Just all these little, little things that you probably don't think much of. Just listen for those buzzwords. And Nami has a um, portion on their page too, where it gives you specific buzzwords that you can listen to. But That's just awesome. start changing those conversations in your friend groups. And I'm, I'm guilty of it too. I was just talking about somebody who was at the bar uh, last weekend and I was like, she was hammered, you know, da, da, da. and I caught myself thinking this and it was a friend of a friend. And then I was like, why was she so drunk at this bar? And I was sober at this bar. So it was very, but there's I, always more going on. Yeah. I remember that addiction and mental illness are tied together. You know, it's um, everybody has a story. People are battling some things and it's something that's really, really hard to talk about. So asking questions, asking why, I think that's One the best thing, thing any of us can do. Yeah. One thing that you had touched on was uh, 800 numbers. Now, um, what a lot of people don't know, and I would not have known if it wasn't for this event and now my relationship with NAMI, they, um, they had designated a specific number. It's not out there yet. I mean, I could tell you, but you can also look it up. It's 988. It's like a 911 for a suicide prevention hotline. Um, They've, it's been in the works. It's actually going to go live next July, but you can definitely look up NAMI 988. It's, it's an easy number to remember. It's like a 911. They want that to be an easy, like if I'm 988, like I'm never going to remember an 800 number, even though theirs is pretty easy. It's like 800-950-NAMI. I mean, but like, I'm not going to remember that 988 you can. So I think that was their whole purpose behind it. And I think that was you know, really good that they did that. That's it was smart. That's all. Yeah. You know, important. from I was gonna say from a I don't want to say an outsider's perspective, but more of someone just listening. You know, I think there's gonna be people that ask. You know, why why is this the the format to talk about it? And you know, in promo specifically, and you know, I just think you know, lack of structure with traveling and all the events, and especially after a pandemic, all of the after parties and the different opportunities that you get as both traveling salesperson or as a distributor to client locations, the opportunity and the lack of structure is there, you know, and it presents itself for, I'm sure people to, to have struggles. And so I think that, you know, especially if one person's hasn't, you know, has an issue and you've been brave enough to talk about it, there's gotta be other people that have, have things going on as well. So just opening that up, um, knowing that our industry can, you know, fuel <laughs> uh, at certain times, bigger <laughs> issues. It's just important to know that we're, we have resources and people to talk to. Well, I mean, I think yeah, this I last, the, the last, you know, 18 months or so has been sort of an indicator as well. I mean, you know, mm. just completely uprooting people's lives and, you know, making people go through massive changes for extended periods of time, you know, can affect somebody's mental health, you know, and so there's, for sure. I, I, and that's why I say like there, you, there are, you know, much larger issues at hand, and then there are, you know, some smaller issues as well. And it doesn't necessarily have to be some huge thing, but I think everybody needs to take care of themselves. And I would like to ask, you know, Amanda, if you have any, uh, you know, I guess, I don't want to say coping mechanisms, but something along those lines, like how do you, how do you take care of yourself when you notice something uh, coming on? 
Yeah. And they are coping mechanisms, right? Um, therapy, 1 million percent therapy, find a therapist and talk to them. Um, I was in and out of therapy for 10 years before I found one that, that really worked. Um, and for me, I, I, I needed that year of sobriety to really get me to a place where I could open up about that. But therapy, 1 million percent. There's a lot of really great uh, documentaries out there. There's one that went out a few months ago called The, the Me You Can't See. The Me You Can't See? Wow, Amanda. Uh, but it's with like Oprah Winfrey and, uh, Prince Harry and just, you know, uh, Lady Gaga's in there talking, you know, and they cover everything from, if you have kids in the car, turn that off right now. They talk about suicide. They talk about rape. They talk about sexual abuse, things that they've been through. These are people, you know, and they're sitting there telling you, Hey, the pandemic really caused a lot of people to feel these things for the first time. For those of us who battle depression and battle anxiety, it made it worse. So I think that's one thing for people who've gone through something, hopefully they're a little bit more empathetic to, um, you know, maybe say, okay, like I have felt this way because of this. I can imagine feeling that way all day, every day for seemingly no reason, right? And that's kind of what it's like. So therapy, 1 million percent and um, therapy is an ongoing thing. You don't go for four months and call it a day. You don't go for a year and call it a day. Like is something that's constantly evolving because new struggles are going to come up. Um, I have to, um, when I feel myself starting to get anxious, I don't always know why, but anxiety is a, a big part of my life. I think I manage it really well. You don't know why. So when I finally through therapy was able to realize, like, I don't know why I'm going to feel anxious. I just am accepting that kind of made it a little bit easier to deal with. But when I feel myself starting to get anxious now, I have to turn on my phone. If I'm driving, I'll pull over. If I'm in my house, I'll go to my room. I need quiet space. Um, you know, and different therapists will give you different coping mechanisms. Um, I do a little number count thing in my, in my head until I calm down. Uh, meditation helps a lot of people. I think it's different for, for everybody. Um, writing is what helps me a lot when I have a lot going on up here and I don't quite know how to put it into words and I'm just feeling every which way I'll just open my notebook and write. I sometimes don't even know what I'm writing and five pages later, five pages later, I feel better. So that's kind of my release. Um, but definitely talk to a therapist. Um, like I said, coping mechanisms are different for everybody and that's exactly the word to use for them, but talk to a therapist, read online, try some things. Dan Evans will tell you to get out and run, walk, you know, there's scientific phys uh, physical components of that, that works for people that doesn't work for me. I do CrossFit, you know, that's great. It, it helps me maintain, but if I'm having a bad day and I'm really in my head and I'm depressed, that CrossFit isn't what works for me to get me out of that. So it's a combination of things. And that's why I asked that question, because I think it is different for everybody. And I just want to put as much stuff out there as I possibly can, yeah. uh, you know, so, and I'm learning a lot about, you know, the kits that Meg and Mandy and the rest of the guys over at Promo Cares put together for this event, you know, the journaling and how that helps and the stats that they put in the front cover of that uh, is, is pretty interesting. So journaling can work. Uh, Josh uh, Popsicle, who we just had on last week. On the uh, on the episode for Industry Insider, and I know something that he had posted on on social media was you know sometimes when he gets in his own head or or whatever is stressing out about something he just needs to go for a run. And he posted a picture yeah. of him and before and after the run, I think. So, um, you know, there are different things for everybody. You know, video games can be something for somebody. Uh, you know. Uh, exercising of some format. Meg, I'm sure for you, it's, you know, getting in the ring and kicking somebody's ass. Like, yeah. <laughs> Going out to my barn and, and pounding some bags. Yeah, you know, I think it's also, those days. yeah, <laughs> I, I don't feel bad for him. <laughs> you know, I will say the one thing that does help, I think is, you know, having somebody to talk to, even if it's not a therapist, if you can't afford a therapist, um, just a friend, or maybe you're not ready to go talk to a therapist yet. Last week, uh, about a week and a half ago, I had to take my daughter to, to college and I was having a very hard time with it. It's like the end of an era, you know? And I was just bawling my eyes out. I didn't know, uh, there was like people I didn't want to talk to because I didn't want to be sad in front of them, you know? Because that's just, but I called my best friend from high school. I already feel myself, but she was like, I'm like, this is how I feel. And it was like valid, like pain and guilt, right? And she's like, I feel that too. And I'm like, well, how do you get through this? Like the, the guilt is real because those things really happen, you know? And she's like, therapy. <laughs> I don't feel guilty anymore because of therapy. And I, so I can't, you know, agree with you more on that. Even if she is my little therapist, um, she, you know, I think it's but really to your point. Out. Yeah. Not everybody can afford therapy. I, Hey, I 1 million percent get that. I spent last, I, I couldn't afford it, you know, last year. 
um, thank God my therapist was either just really nice or a little worried that all of her work would be undone. So she saw me pro bono via Zoom for, for quite a, um, some time, but talking about it. So going back to Jeff, what you had originally asked, how can we help raise awareness? Like, talk about it, talk about it to your friend. Meg, call me when you're crying. Like, I want to, you know, like, <laughs> like I call you when I'm crying or, you know, find, find that friend that you can talk to, but be okay talking to them about it and say, I'm not okay today. I'm, I'm having a bad day or I'm sad. And this is why. And I think the more conversations, when you ask somebody, I think that's the most simple thing you can do when you ask somebody how they're doing, really ask them how they're doing. Um, and mean it, just, just care, just give a shit a little bit more. Sorry. Just not care. Uh, on know this podcast, mean. that's like a <laughs> sailor over here. So don't worry. Because, uh, do you have any other questions for Amanda before we get into rapid fire? No, man, I'm just really proud of you. You've come so far. You've worked very hard. You know, you know, our relationship kind of started in the pandemic. Um, you reached out to me to do an article and I just was enamored by your, your, just your passion and how much you care and how much you leave your heart on the, your sleeve. And I admire that. So keep doing what you're doing because even the tiniest ripple effects have a big, it, uh, just the ripple effects, something little can turn into something big. And I'm to the point now where I'm confident in like who I am. I'm confident in like my, my career, my, you know, the, the space I'm at in the industry where I feel like I can say these things more freely, but I haven't always been there. And it's, uh, it's been a process. And I just, I, I think the more, the more people that put these messages out there, the more people might feel comfortable talking about it too, until it just becomes a normal conversation. Hey, what are you having for dinner? Hey, how's therapy today? Like they really should go hand in hand. So thank you guys for addressing it. Sure. So I do have one thing to add on a lighter note, uh, but not for Amanda, for Steven. Steven, I have one statement and one question. Okay. I'll go with the question first. I see you're wearing the shirt. Are you wearing the bottoms? Are you wearing the bottoms? <laughs> hey, oh. mm. uh, no, Show I'm not us. wearing the bottoms. Show us, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. not wearing bottoms, period. Be a rapid fire. <laughs> Meg, Meg is clearly not wearing her bottoms either. Um, so, and then my statement, Stephen, I don't think that's how hashtags work. Uh, nor question marks. It's, it's, it's a backward it, hashtag. We're starting a statement of or, some sort. Or, or, or not. It's, that's or not how questions work. No, it's work. what I, so what I'm doing is I'm actually inviting people to play tic-tac-toe with me. Oh, all right. I would like to put uh, an X in the top left, please. All right. Okay. I'm, sure. I'm an I'm an X in the corner too. Anyway, let's let's, let's go. Like, asking help? <laughs> all right. Well, we have three X's. I don't know who's X, but um... <laughs> all right. Rapid fire, Meg Ruber, right. you go first. All right. So, what is your favorite position to sleep in? I'm a three quarter, I'm a three quarter sleeper. What does that mean? I mean, you like I sleep on my uh, on my belly and my side at the same time. If that makes oh, sense. Oh, I think I do that. So I I, pro I prop the leg up, you know, and yeah. I'm like that thing. <laughs> so I'm not fully on my stomach or fully on my side. I'm, just, I'm in between. Gotcha. How about you, Amanda? I'm a stomach sleeper. I sleep like this, like down, like on my stomach, my hands here. <laughs> really weird. Like, <laughs> you ever wake up with your uh, your fingers like? Spingling? From no, like, but sometimes I wake up and I'm holding my own hand and I'm like, does that mean I'm sad? Am I lonely? Like, what am I doing here? I wake up holding my own hand. Am I praying? Like, it's fine. Everything is fine. I have no idea why I'm single, you guys. Even how do you sleep? So, side, but now that you mentioned three quarters, I didn't know that was really an option. So I'll, I, I think three quarters then. Three quarters of the it, thing, man. Like when you're trying to get fitted for your new mattress, all these new places like purple and all that, they ask you, like, are you a side sleeper, a belly sleeper, a back sleeper, a three quarter sleeper? It's a thing, man. Look it up. Right, three quarters. Three quarters. <laughs> three quarters, of quarters. <laughs> new hashtag for you, Steven. After you hashtag three quarters. The more you know. Uh, I have a really, I have like really bad hips, so I can't. If I if I do start to like try to sleep on my right side, I will go three quarters because I can't lay on my right hip. But I always just. If I want to fall asleep, left side, fetal position, every time I don't even move the whole night, I am out. But I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even realize it, but I probably am. I, probably am. I feel so much closer to you all right now. <laughs> we got three quarters. Yeah. Like whole scenes too. So that was a good rapid fire. That was, a good one. That was pretty good. <laughs> Stephen McFadden, why don't you go next? Um, I was with uh, with you know football starting up. Um, what's your favorite live sporting event? Is there a favorite 
that you guys have? Hockey. UFC. Hockey? Hockey, 100%. Live oh. UFC, you said? Yeah, yeah. Football, okay. for sure. Specifically the Seattle Seahawks, but I won't get into that with you. <laughs> I thought you were be. I, I could have sworn. I would. I would have guessed you would have said baseball. I love baseball, mm. but I love baseball. I. I ooh. <laughs> I don't know. You love now, baseball. Now I'm torn. Now person, I don't know what my favorite you is. You don't like it on TV. I. I mean, but she I'm likes that. it in person. Same way. Yeah. It in person. person. <clears throat> but, but I don't. I, like go, I don't. Aspect. I exactly. I don't feel like I like going to a baseball game to really get into like the pitch count and everything else. You know what I mean? I'm not that kind of baseball fan but i love going mm-hmm. for the social aspect the talking and then it's it's something that's happening while you're doing everything else yeah, yeah. so walking around the 12 dollar beers yeah the definitely the 12 dollar beers yeah <laughs> all right uh all right i guess i'll go next yeah did everybody mm-hmm. answer everybody mm-hmm. answered right all mm-hmm. right cool um so what is sort of each of your um way of i guess taking care of yourself mentally if you're taking a mental health day what are you doing I would probably go do some yoga because it really helps tremendously, helps tremendously, but it's not something that's easy and it really challenges you. And if it is easy, then you're not in the right class, or maybe that's what you wanted. You know what I mean? But I feel like <clears throat> you're going through it, especially the place I go to tribe hot yoga. It's like a hundred plus degrees. What Jeff, like have you, you could seen, hang with me. In a have you yoga. seen my crow? Have you seen my crow? I did. Let's see your crow. We saw your butt I mean, crack right now, but like, you know, <laughs> if you really want to go back and look at it, just look at the, I mean, I think we want to see your crow. I think we want to see the crow that you are telling us about. I don't think we need to do that right now. Cause we're running out of time. You're, you're dressed Ooh. for it. <laughs> you have some flexibility. Uh, the- I like yeah. sports, Jeff. I like, <laughs> I like, I like, is that your, is that your thing? Yeah. I need like competition of some sort to get some adrenaline going. So how do you deal when there's not that though? Or when you're, oh, I, I register like- for sports i have my outlets yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so like i play softball and when i wasn't playing softball i was playing soccer and when i was playing soccer i was playing football so actually playing and participating is your thing oh yeah Mm -hmm. watching or partaking correct cool yes all right which is great for maintaining mental health steven yeah oh awesome (laughs) didn't even know you yes Um, for me, honestly, um, physical activity can be, but getting shit done can also be, uh, you know, just to sort of knock some stuff off the list and makes me feel a little like less anxiety, if you will. Yeah. hundred percent. Video games for me is an outlet as well. Yeah. How about you, Amanda? I'm, um, I, I have to, like, if I'm going to take a true mental health day, which I've started doing, um, here and there, I, will silence my phone. I will put my phone like in my underwear drawer or somewhere weird, like just like put it away out of sight, out of mind. And, and then I just kind of go with the flow for me. that's a big disconnecting from my phone, from social media, from anybody calling and just saying, you are not going to pay attention to this today. You are not needed for anybody, but you, um, those days have been pretty cool. Sometimes I'll just go for a drive without my phone. Sometimes I'll just, you know, like walk the neighborhood. Sometimes I'll just watch what, I said, don't get lost. Yeah, don't get I lost. Want my phone to be the day I go driving and get lost. <laughs> okay, so that happened to me one day. So I can't go like too far. I have to go on the same like route in the intercoastal <laughs> now because that literally happened to me one day, and then I got anxiety and it completely. It was just, it was it was the whole. I was crying the whole thing. That um, happened to me. Run yeah, and it, me. I was like, I don't need my phone. Oh my god, where's my hotel? God forbid yeah. you have to do what people did thirty years ago, you know, and like actually talk to another person to figure stop out. and ask for directions. You know, yeah. Yeah. So no, I said cash for my phone and the rest of it is kind of up in the air, but that just makes me stay present. Very cool. All right, Amanda, what is your question for us? All right. So I'm going to ask you a question and the answer is in the question. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. Easy. Biggie. B-I-G, you know, get it? Um, yeah, probably Tupac. <clears throat> probably Tupac. Yeah, because I like both a lot. So both are okay. Good. Jeff won that. Je- Jeff won rapid fire because he knew the right answer and he said it. Right I was, answer. I mean, but I was just listening to "Give Me the Loot," and so like that's a that's a good song. Uh, but I think I'll go Tupac. Yeah. All right. I mean, look, you can like both, but there's one clear winner. And that's why I was so quickly uh, to answer because it's Tupac. Jeff, that is why you're the winner. Your present is in the mail. 
<laughs> thank you, thank you. I will, uh, I will look for that and give you a shout. <laughs> did, did I not say Tupac? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, Stephen. Okay, Stephen. Okay, okay. We had to, you know. And Meg, I still love you. Thanks. You're from the East Coast. I get it. I know. Right. Yeah. All right, um, I just want to throw one more thing in there real quick yes. to just hurry end up. This. You know, you guys are wearing your sleep in for good shirts, but all kidding yes. aside, you know, we have made a really big push for mental health awareness um, for the industry, for the future of the industry. And we would love for anyone listening to this podcast, definitely take a couple minutes and go visit the website, promocares.org slash sleep in for good. You can find out how to get involved. You can find out what we're doing. We have a really fun video and there's um, a donation link there as well. And we are trying to hit our goal at 10,000. We are almost there. Um, and then once you donate, we have a whole plethora of things as well. So check it out. That's I all. love the monthly options too, to throw that in real fast, Meg. I know I did the mm -hmm. monthly, it's like $28 a month and you have it written out kind of what that does, but that way you contribute after the event is over. So I, I love that. Keep it up, you guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, look, I've got one other suggestion for you guys as a, as a possible coping mechanism. I don't know if it'll work or not, but look, our good friends over at Tervis, they, they did this thing for uh, sustainability. They did a beach cleanup. So, hey, if you want to get out and do something active and, and good for the rest of the world, uh, you could do what they did. They partnered with Four Oceans and uh, they did a beach cleanup on Siesta Key. And according to Four Oceans, which does cleanups year round and across the world, this was their largest turnout with 1,343 registered participants, which is awesome. And they were able to collect and, and count the following 140. 44 straws, 5,877 cigarettes, 463 plastic bottles, 187 plastic cutlery, uh, 355 plastic bags, 234 uh, plastic or foam cups, 1,346 bottle caps. Uh, look, Tervis is, they're, they're passionate about the oceans and they care about the creatures who call it their home and they're committed to making it a better place and have been for 72 years, not because it's uh, cool or trendy or help sell tumblers, but because it's the right thing to do. So go check them out at tervispromos.com and uh, let them know that we sent you. How about that? Why is Amanda <laughs> dying and, and, and losing it right now? We were all doing the numbers. By Every number you did, I, I was signing them for you. This is the thing, Amanda, I was telling you about being the host of the show, and this is the kind of thing that, that you miss out on, because I can't stare at you guys when I'm reading the ad, because there's only <laughs> I have two screens, but then I'm going to be looking over here and then seeing this all happen. And yeah, You should so. do a special, a special host, make Stephen or Meg, like, so that you can kind of, you know. Get, get I minute. should do that. I should make should you do guys that. Do more. You know, I really should. But I love I loved your closing there, Jeff. You killed it. Nailed it. Thanks. Nailed it. Really appreciate it. Hashtag yeah. three quarters. You, you guys, uh, <laughs> hey, there you go. No, it's three quarters hashtag, right? Because you put that yeah. hashtag after. Oh no, you changed okay. it. All right, cool. Well, Amanda, you're awesome. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. And um, if anybody wants to talk to somebody, I'm here to talk to you all day, every day. So surprisingly, I listen very well. I promise. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, hey, stay tuned. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week for another great episode. Uh, take care. See you guys. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Promo Corner's Industry Insider. For more great content from industry thought leaders, including podcasts, blogs, and videos, visit promocorner.com.